Okay, so now we're going to do this problem number 20 here from the 2023 AMC 10A. Uh, this basically turns out to just be a casework problem. And if you've done several casework problems in the past, hopefully you were able to somewhat navigate the setup here. And let's see what that looks like. Each square in a three by three grid of squares is colored red, white, blue, or green. So that every two by two square, meaning if I was to come over here and uh, use this highlighter, this is the two by two square that they're talking about. But not just that one, but also this one. All such two by two squares that you could make uh, contains one little square, one little square, these little tiny squares, right, of each color. So if you look, for example, in the upper left right here, you have blue, green, red, and white are all there. One of all the colors present, okay? Then what? How many different, it says one such coloring is shown on the right below. So you can go ahead and navigate your the visual for you moving a shifting block of two by two and look around the one on the right to get an idea of what they mean. So I'm just going to say, I'm not going to think about what colors are what. I'm just going to make casework. And I'm going to use their, their example as my first type of case. I'm going to label it as case one. And I'm going to go ahead and draw. And I'm going to put letters A, B, C, and D. I don't really care what the letters are. They represent four colors and it doesn't matter which one's which for this purpose. So I'm gonna put A in the middle. Once I've done that, I'm gonna put B in the upper left corner. No matter what you do, and you wanna kind of think about what happens if that color is color choice B, whatever B happens to be. Well, it would mean that my upper right corner is going to need a B and it cannot go here but it could go in the right corner or the middle right. I'm gonna to have to put a B one of those places. So for now, I'm gonna mimic theirs and put the B here, but I'm also going to be aware I could conceivably put it there as well. Okay, so now that I've considered those, I'm gonna think about where else needs to have a letter B. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it differently than theirs, I guess. I'm gonna put it in this bottom right corner because I see that if I did this, I would get this type of setup where the four corners are all the same color. And there's no conflict because every two by two square has a B in it and an A in it. Next, pick a color like say this one and call it C. You would then look in the upper right corner where now that upper left corner rather, that says B, C, A, and blank. That corner needs to have a D. So this middle value here is forced to be the letter D. But now the upper right, the upper right four squares need to have a C in them. There's only one square open, so it has to be a C and likewise a D right here. There is no decision to be made once I placed a letter here. Everything else has to go through. Now, you say, but what if you switch the C and the D? We'd have to consider that. We'll take care of that with a simple four factorial. So if you do four factorial, you get 24 different ways to do case one. Okay, but let's set the four factorial aside for now. We don't want to keep track of that. Let's create our cases and we'll worry about the factorial calculations later. Essentially, the four factorial is four choices for what color A is, four choices for position B, or three choices for B, uh, two choices for C, and one choice for D. So now we'll come over here and make case two. And what I'd like to do is think about if I can keep as much the same as possible, A here, B in a corner, and if I put the B here, once I placed that corner B right there, this corner B was fixed. It didn't have a choice anymore. And once that one was placed, it was really just placing any letter here, C or D, and then going around and everything was forced. So really, if I choose this corner down here as B right now, there are no other ways. No other ways that would not be resolved by four factorial choosing the colors of A, B, C, and D. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, maybe I don't put it there then. And like the one they have here, I'll choose the middle one to be the letter B. Let's go ahead and do that. 
why did I not choose this middle position here for B like we talked about at the beginning? Because typically in casework, you really want to do only one slight change at a time. If I can maintain sameness for as long as possible and then walk it back one move, then I'm going to be much more careful and not likely miss any cases. Okay. So once I place that B there, go ahead and pick a choice. Again, like we did here, pick anything you want for this letter C. Okay. Then this is forced to be D. This is forced to be C so that the upper right four small squares will have a C in them. This is forced to be D, and this is forced to be D. So now what I'm looking at, to me, it reminds me of triangles. It looks like I have an isosceles triangle where the Bs are at the vertices, and I have an inverted isosceles triangle where the Ds are at the vertices like that. That's kind of how I would visualize that. So, okay, we'll call that case two and picture these inverted triangles placed there as such. Now we're going to try to walk it back again. And we're going to say case three. Notice that once we placed the B right here, the C's, D's, they had to go basically in their positions. Their color might change. But again, switching the letter C and D is irrelevant. I could just pick a different color for C, which is accommodated in the four factorial selection. C represents a position more than a color. And then I choose a color for the position that the C is in. Okay. Uh, from here, let's go ahead and look at potentially another case. Because see, we talked earlier about what would happen if I had chosen the second letter B to go from an upper left corner to right here. Furthermore, I don't need to worry about moving B out of the corner. Let's say I wanted to put B like here. I'll use that one over there. That's just going to be the letter D. I don't need to switch them. They're just places in potential setups where I'm then filling the colors into every color. Every letter will have the same color. And then I get to pick the color. So I don't need to move the letter. It's just a position holder. Okay. So now when I put the B here, you say, okay, well, if I look at my upper four squares, upper right, I've got an, a B in them. The upper left has a B in them. Upper left meaning the four squares in the upper left like this. But we're talking about that B here, okay? And then in the bottom right, I'll just highlight so you see what I'm talking about again. The bottom right four corners, they have a B. And if I go back, the upper left has a B. And if I go back, the upper right has a B. So the only thing that we're missing is the lower left four squares and there is no B in those squares. So as such, I'm going to need to place, oops, let's undo that and get the right size pen here. I'm gonna need to place the B right here. I cannot put it here or here because then it would conflict with the Bs being in the other spots. There'd be too many Bs in the four corner setups, the four square setups. So then I look at this and I go, gosh, that looks an awful lot like case two. I wonder if it'll play out kind of like a rotation of case two, in which case I don't really need another one. I could just rotate case two. But, you know, uh, let's go ahead and place a D value. In fact, let's try to mimic the one in case two. If I place D here, then this, well, actually better yet, go back. Let's place the D here. And then I will have to go. This has to be C. This has to be D. This has to be D, and this has to be C. If I put a D right here, there'd be two Ds too close. So we've got the D there. This has to be C, okay? So now, isn't that really exactly what we said? It's a rotation of case two. You could treat it as a separate case, or you could just double the results from case two. Are there any other cases that we could get? Well, if we try to do case four, again, once you'd place the B here and here, there was no choice for that third B. It has to be that way. And whatever you pick here, it forces these to be the same letter. So there's not really going to be any others. Could I do one maybe that has B in the opposite corners, like B, A, B? You just want to check. You don't want to make an assumption, right? Well, if I do that, then 
Could I put a B right here for the upper right four corners? No. Uh, for right, 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 four squares. How about here? No, it's next to a B. That would force this to be B, and we see immediately it becomes case one. Play around with a few more of those, and you'll notice that there are, in fact, no other cases. You can just kind of convince yourself of that. Let me pause the video and try it yourself. Try all the different things you can think of and convince yourself. Don't just watch. Convince yourself on a piece of paper that there's no more cases to be had. So from that point, you just say, well, this one has 24, and this one has 24. And since I went ahead and made case three, rather than doubling case two and calling it a rotation, we just give it 24. Again, I don't need to worry about moving the letters around because they're placeholders, not colors. And by doing choose color A, what it will be, four choices. Choose color B, three choices. C, two choices. D is whatever's left. That takes care of all the rearrangements of all the colors within each case. And there's three 24s, and the answer will be 72. I'll see you in the next video.